I'm Will Hedrick. And I'm Jordan Schaffer. And this is Dog Ears and Timestamps, a book club podcast. A good book club podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope so. Yeah, I was looking around. As long at, as we've been doing it. Yeah, I was looking around at all the other book club, uh, like, or, you know, podcasts with books on them. And, mm-hmm. and I was trying to just, like, do certain keywords, just like how we have, you know, dog ears or dog. I, I didn't try dogs because that would bring up a whole different topic. <laughs> right. But I, I typed in dog ears and uh, and a podcast came up that was pretty, pretty brand new that I actually really liked. And I want to give them a shout out right at the beginning. Um, it's called Dog Eared Pages, a literary podcast, and it's got uh, Lauren James and Lucy Powery. Anyway, they're both very, uh, they're very, it sounds like they're both very well read, or at mm-hmm. the very least, it reminds me of people that I know that are very well read. <laughs> kind of like, um, like anytime I talk to Caitlin and Courtney about like an English book or something, it just is like, mm-hmm. oh wow, okay, not only did you understand everything in the book, but... You understand like concepts like of writing, mm-hmm. <laughs> not not just like the different themes and concepts in the book, like liter- right. literary concepts. Mm-hmm. So uh, and yeah, these two girls, they just uh, they're really smart. They kind of bounce around with all their ideas. They're not talking about like a book in particular, but they do talk about a bunch of different literary concepts and books. And I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. And mm, it's like it a kinda, more academic approach compared to what we're doing, I guess. Yeah. And, and they kind of but they talk about stuff sort of the way that we do, too. It's just like how how we will we'll talk about like the story as it's progressing and like different things and what we're guessing is going to happen and they'll just be like how did you feel about um like you know the, like how last week i think we were breaking down the uh, the rising action and the, mm-hmm. the climax and the falling action and i said that there were two climaxes where you were like no i think it's just an extended rising action they do a lot more i, I think a lot more breakdowns like that but okay. it, was, it was still really mm-hmm. interesting and and it and they weren't focused on any one thing and it was uh, it was really cool so i mm-hmm. would uh, recommend it it's brand new and um, it's like they just do the the whole book in one episode i don't even think or... they do books i think it's oh, okay. it's just they're it's just like a literary discussion they only have three episodes out um mm. right now and i don't think yeah so this third episode is just called it retellings so okay. you know they were just going over a bunch It'd be of interesting books. to see what their long game is yeah and it's, like they're, they're not because they're... i mean we've given ourselves like a convenient crutch in the in our format where mm-hmm. we just read a book and talk about it as we're reading it you know yeah. and it's you know structured for that reason but if they're like super loose and ambiguous i just, I just wonder how long you can do that right yeah and because their first episode is the books that made us so they talk about different books that i guess were really influential on them growing mm-hmm. up and then this one the next one after that's called summer reads so i guess you know and then uh, later they had one called retellings so i guess you know mm-hmm. they think it's just like they're very i guess if they're just like crushing books constantly and maybe this do. is where you were about to go then that gives them a lot to work with if their format is just to be loose and jumping everywhere because if they've got like if they're and if they're overlapping here and there like you know mm-hmm. let's say that they're maniacs and they read five books a week each That's then awesome. they you know maybe they happen to read two of the same book as each other Mm -hmm. so they can reference it but then they can be like but then in this book it's similar that you didn't read or something i could see how that could last a little bit longer but they'd have to be crushing books man yeah and i honestly give themselves a base of talking points yeah the way they were talking about it they they have either been crushing books or they went to school for english those are english majors yeah and they they, they can talk about it yeah 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 and anyway just i would definitely check them out if uh, if that does sound interesting i might check it out some more some more reading stuff and uh yeah i think uh yeah just just reach out to them and then um yeah start listening to their stuff and tell them Mm -hmm. you want more content they only have three episodes so keep them keep them excited right yeah uh, it always helps to get a little bit of support so Right. Um, yeah. With that said, uh, tell all your friends about us too, please. <laughs> check them out, and then and then tell them where right. where you found them, and then hopefully their friends will check us out, and we'll, we'll be we'll, we'll trade get a little off. bit of overlap. Uh, I wonder where they're based out of. I don't know. They had a nice. Can, they had nice accents. We can to collab. To. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. That when we're be, all famous podcasters, famous and we bring the two podcasters. worlds together, and. Uh, I mean, no, probably not. But <laughs> maybe, maybe, dude. Yeah, we'll just. Uh, but one can dream. Yeah. So um, honestly, I think it'd be fun to to reach out to them on our Twitter, maybe, and just let them know that, like, hey, uh, or at least not even let them know. Just maybe retweet their podcast and be like, hey, check this out. It's a new new fun podcast. There's another one I saw that I haven't given too much time to. It's just called, um, I think it's uh, the drunk the drunk podcast or the drunk 
Um, oh, you mentioned book it before club, we the started. Drunk book yeah. Club. And, uh, and they do a different book every week and I don't know if mm-hmm. they read it every week or if they just talk about a book every week, right. but it's, uh, I mean, you know, and you can't really go off of comments cause people are crazy, but, yeah. uh, but you know, one of the comments was like, this is like the dumbest person in class giving you a podcast. <laughs> and then other ones were like, this is the best podcast I've ever heard. It's right. talking about all my favorite books and they make it fun and they sure know their beer and their, bo- <laughs> and their books, you know? And so right. I haven't checked that one out, but they actually just did Salem's lot, which is <laughs> right. kind of, yeah, kind of perfect perfect for for a segue for us because you know of our we did right. salem's lot and we're doing you know that was books whatever book this is i can't remember right now what the book we just finished is it's called the institute, the, the institute. <laughs> i was like i was going i was like the outsider no the stand no I, we didn't even read this <laughs> the institute and it was uh i really liked it i thought it was going to end a little differently but uh i would say like 90 percent of the book had me kind of like on the tip of my seat and then the last little bit was just sort of like and here's the rest of the info you wanted. Right. Nice and spelled out. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I kind of, kind of, for some reason, like I wanted a more ominous end of the world feeling maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I guess I wanted more of that like kind of classic Stephen King sting that we all, or that I talk about a lot that right. we felt when we read Salem's Lot at least, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. What did you think? Did you, uh, did you read just today or throughout the week? Or just how, how's today. Everything? Yeah. Knowing that it was as little reading compared comparatively than you know the last couple of weeks I, I i really knew that i could put it off and then i had also two weeks ago not two weeks ago a week and a half ago set up an appointment to go get my brakes replaced today oh, yeah so i was like well i know that i can read while i'm getting that done nice. so because i'm just gonna stay there at the dealership so i'll just i'll just read them i didn't i ended up just watching <laughs> the entirety of the dan patrick show live this morning because i got there just before eight and they start at eight mm-hmm. and so I, I read a little bit after 11 when the show ended and I was still there until like 12, but, and then I read whenever I got home. So do, do you watch that on your phone? Yeah. That's funny. Anytime I'm anywhere waiting, like I, I, for sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time pretending like it's pre 1990s, like, and I don't have a cell phone. So like, yeah. I'll try to like entertain myself with what's mm-hmm. been like laid around, like the TV they have playing in the background. I don't, I don't typically try to just talk to strangers, just not, right, not that yeah. I'm against it. Like I'm usually okay at talking. I to, certainly to never randos. engage. If they yeah. happen to engage and the conversation goes well, I do well, but I right. never fucking engage. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't start it usually. And, uh, but and usually the only people that do start it with me are, are like, are like my dad's age. <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like older. dads and mm-hmm. they're just, yeah, they're just like ready to talk to anybody about anything. But, um, that's kind of ever happens for me is whenever people I'd, uh, identify my Astros cap and oh, nice. just like, Hey, how about the Astros? And then we start talking about baseball or whatever. But. <laughs> yeah. I was just imagining you sitting there with your, with your Kindle, like reading and, and then, cause like I always look around too, to see what other people are doing and mm-hmm. it's without a, without fail. Like it doesn't matter age anymore. It doesn't, it, everybody's on their phones. Like oh, immediately. Yeah, 100%. And, and, uh, and not like I'm trying to be different or anything. I'm definitely not like trying to be like, look at me, I'm different. I'm not on my phone. Cause I'll pull my phone out too. But mm-hmm. I, uh, I do like to see how long I can go and see if there's anything around me that I can do. But it, I, I, I don't know why, but I never bring a book or plan with a book or anything. Yeah. Like I never, I, I do on like planes or trips or mm-hmm. something. I'll be like, ah, oh, let me bring a book. But for some reason, I just never think to like, oh, well, I could just wait this out with a book. Right. And if uh, I'm and certain that I'm going to be stuck with next to nothing to do for more than 20 minutes, I'll make sure that I have my Kindle with me. Yeah. Nice. Because otherwise it's like. Like I can get on my phone and I might even play some games that mm-hmm. I play fairly regularly. But like after 20 minutes, I've, you know, done my daily check-ins on the dumb games that I'm playing. <laughs> I've spent my daily resources on those stupid games. I've checked Facebook three times. I've, you know, <laughs> I've caught up on Twitter and probably even read it. I know what everybody's doing. <laughs> yeah. Just like, okay, so now I've got nothing to do, which is fine because then it's, you know, an excellent practice and patience. Uh, which I think is important and something that I'm pretty good at. I'm pretty good at just sitting there and waiting. <laughs> um, but at a certain point, you're just like, okay, I'm done practicing patience. I'm done. I would like to at least be reading now. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I try to be conscious, like, okay, well, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be stuck at a dealership for at least two hours. I'm going to bring my Kindle. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I always forget my Kindle, even though they have, like, great battery life, and it's basically mm-hmm. like a book. You can read it anywhere. It's better. You can read it at night, you know? It's, right. It's great. Does yours have the free 3G? Is that still a thing that they do? Because whenever they first came out, at least the paper whites, mm-hmm. it came with just free 3G. 
for internet signal so that like if you were just in the middle of the city and there was no Wi-Fi and you finished a book, you could just buy and download another book. And it wasn't a subscription that you had to have or anything. I think I used to have one, but I, I, I bought the one that there was a model that came out that like it came with ads. So like any mm-hmm. of your screensavers were like these ads yeah, that they would put on. Mine on there. does. Yeah. It was, it was like 30 bucks cheaper for Mm -hmm. just like ads as a screensaver that i don't even have to read like sure yeah yeah, i'll pay and i don't know if it was if it's got the 3g everywhere because mine still works and it's now like this is a gen 3 uh, yeah kindle paperwhite and it's i don't even know how old i bought it before i moved up to boston and that's now five years ago (laughs) so it's you know very old and i'm surprised that the 3g infrastructure is still there for it that they haven't shut it down. Yeah. No, that's a good <laughs> Unless point. Unless they're still providing it for the other Kindles, and so that's why I ask if yours, because yours is like brand spanking new, right? Yeah, and I know that it connects. Like I've never had an issue anywhere, but mm-hmm. I feel like I, I feel like I always connect to the Wi-Fi, but I don't. Right. I, I can't consciously like. I'm sure I connected it at home to my Wi-Fi, but I can't remember ever doing that here. So I don't. I don't think it still has it, but. Mm. Um, but it, you know, it probably does for all the ones that like it's sending the ads to. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure to. So that's part of what's great about the Kindle and having mm-hmm. it around is that, yeah, you can have like a thousand books on it, and if you finish all thousands of those books, just buy another one wherever you are. <laughs> Anywhere, but, yeah. any book. Works really great. I don't, they don't think they have it for like the 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 the, the other Kindle, like the the. I don't know, the, the fire or whatever. I think, mm-hmm. Do they still call them that? Um, oh, like the iPad The ones one. that are more like tablets mm-hmm. and less like just e-readers. Can, yeah, yeah. Because, you can, because doing other things on there requires more bandwidth and so more money lost for them. Just downloading a book is literally kilobytes of data right. for them. So that's why they gave away the plan for free. Yeah. Um, um, How are sports books? Do those hold up? Like it's got to be a really good story, huh? Like because uh, I feel like it'd be hard to capture the the the... I guess it depends on what moment. kind of a sports book it is. Like, is it a book? I'm thinking like Friday think Night Lights, but like mm. that one I kind of knew. But that's more knew. of a story about people, right? Is and it? The I don't sports, know. I just remember the movie. All I, yeah, that's all I remember is the movie. <laughs> and that was more like, that was a story about a team mm-hmm. of kids and they're overcoming racism oh, in okay. that town, you know, more than anything. Yeah. And like, they're, it's just, you know, how, you know, a, a group of kids can come together and overcome things with, okay. and, and their coach as well. And, you know, everything. Yeah. So, you know, it's about people being together. Yeah. That's and the, nice. the sports is just the vehicle for that story. Yeah. Cause they, well, I don't want to say the ending, but we all know the ending. It, <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't what I was thinking, it, especially for like a sports book with, where the ending is usually just kind of all around. Sports feel stories good. are this always just, about like growth. Almost almost a hundred percent just about people overcoming things and growing okay. which i guess could be said about the majority of storytelling but right usually there's like or not usually but often there's like a clear obstacle like that dragon needs to die <laughs> <laughs> and the character yeah. might grow because of that but right. whereas like sports books are almost a hundred percent like i've got an inner demon or my dad okay. beat me up when I was a kid, yeah. or this town is racist, or you know something. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's about like character growth, not just the goal of killing the dragon. Right. Like almost a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, because yeah, because uh, yeah, they. I mean, they couldn't have made a uh, like a several season long TV show out of it if it was just about like one kid be, being really good at football, and then right. and then go and then when he goes off to college or if he does or goes to play pro, like. Mm-hmm. Especially because the then it's not even Friday Night Lights. It's then Saturday Night yeah, Lights. Yeah, Or if he makes it to the NFL, Sunday Night Lights. So they got to <laughs> change the title of the show. <laughs> right. How was sports this week, though? Did you like it? Um, Overall, yes. Yeah, that's good. Because it's... Yeah, I think we were talking about it beforehand, and I know nothing, and you are just like, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> you know, it was sports. Football it's still, is still football. Going. Texans somehow pulled it out. Yes. Against Kansas. I'm into that. Cowboys lost, which is always a good thing. Uh, Patriots barely won. Not barely won. Uh, felt like they barely won. Mm-hmm. Uh, Astros are making me worry, but yeah, whatever. It's just sports. Sports continue to be sports. And when I'm out of the moment, I realize that. <laughs> and the moment I'm screaming or you know cheering, but then after I'm just like, it's just sports, man. Like it's always like this. <laughs> that, that is that is the cool thing though about it is that like it's always new. There's always a new game. Like if you have a team and you can get into it like that, you mm-hmm. really are in the moment, you right? Know? And uh, and 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 it always seems like there's something on. Like it, it don't. I don't feel like there's too many months of off season. Like if you're into baseball, if you're into multiple sports, right, yeah, yeah. Now, there's almost now no if dead you're zone. Maybe just into one, like yeah, especially like 
like an odd one. Like not that hockey's odd, but you know what I mean. Like it's not right. as popular as say football and baseball. Mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. being a crazy hockey fan, uh, which I'm not, but I do like hockey. So if I was gonna watch hockey, it'd be like I can only watch it for a couple like part of the year, and then yeah. and then I can only watch teams that I of states that I've visited. Like <laughs> there's not right. like a there might be. I mean there's like the ice rays and Corpus, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that Texas has like a. Dallas has an NHL team. Oh, okay. Are, are they, and that's it. Are they renowned? <laughs> uh, they've won a couple Stanley Cups. All right. That's that's the big one, too, huh? They've been struggling for a few years at this point. Um, well, maybe but, I should uh, give them another shot. I am into yeah, but hockey. they're from Dallas. I know. And I, Dallas I is saw, for bad people. <laughs> I saw the Red Wings play, too, and that was just a lot of fun. Like, Detroit's mm-hmm. so into themselves, just like Texas is so into itself. But, yeah. like, being up there and watching them, like, because, like, they straight up have, like, Detroit versus everybody like that's like right. a slogan you know so. <laughs> well certainly whenever you know their entire economy clashed and nobody helped them oh fair, fair enough so. <laughs> yeah I mean they're still not they, they still they're have still nothing. not helping them out there you can Even buy in houses Flint. in Detroit for like five bucks yeah and that, <laughs> like uh, they literally used to go around and just like lighthouses on fire as like a, a pastime because yeah. they were just abandoned. who cares yeah yeah and literally what are, what are you gonna nothing. do bust the, that that kid lighting a house on fire or the other group of kids lighting that other house on fire it's just like right, yeah. call the fire department yeah, the, the but, detroit's uh, been in a bad spot since the economic crisis but yeah um, kids <laughs> <laughs> um there's this goofy story because you're just talking about kids burning down houses that my uncle tells uh, my dad's brother he used to live in canada mm-hmm. and he lives in a little just like nothing town just yeah. a tiny little canadian town um where he did work with the fire department off season and stuff like that blah blah, blah. that's cool and uh, but it was almost a hundred percent owned by this Russian clan that was there, <laughs> the, uh, the Canadian, the Russian Canadians. <laughs> yeah, and every now and then, allegedly, according to allegedly. my uncle's stories, they would just like throw a fucking riot and just get crazy drunk and walk down the street naked <laughs> and just burn the town down. <laughs> <laughs> because they owned all the buildings and then they there were ours to do with what we yeah. want. <laughs> There's just like, you know what we're going to do? We haven't done in six months. We're going to get crazy drunk, walk around naked and burn our city down and burn it and down. And we'll start build over. it back up. Yeah. That's how we keep our jobs. <laughs> it's just like, that's a life, man. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that was just something I thought about whenever you're talking about the kids in good old Detroit. <laughs> Yeah, the kids in this book weren't even that crazy. Like, they did some crazy stuff to the Institute that's beyond belief, but they didn't light it on fire, at least. <laughs> right. You know, they just made it levitate. And it wasn't out of sheer <laughs> idleness, you know? <laughs> they, they made it levitate through anger, the power of their anger. No. <laughs> um, it doesn't seem, actually, now that I'm thinking about the kids and their powers, it doesn't really seem like, like with a lot of stories, how... It seems like emotion is definitely like a super huge factor mm-hmm. in like the their abilities coming out, or uh, I guess I'm mainly just thinking of like fire people. Like they they they're hot and they're angry, so they let it out, you know. Right. And, but it, at least that's always it. It always kind of seems, at least in, in in things that like if you're more emotional, maybe. Uh, you'll have more power oozing. It's out. an easy thing to believe, yeah, and because it happens in real life to degrees. Oh yes, yeah, with, with like people in uh, like survival situations. That's right. the wrong word, but like the the extreme danger. Like, oh, my kid's under this car. Like now right. I can now lift, I can lift a now car. I can lift yeah, two thousand right. pounds when I and I'll be sore for two months. <laughs> right, <laughs> but yeah. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and so it's a, it's a theme that's very believable for sure, and especially because these kids were in a crisis situation and they figured out the power mm-hmm. of banding together. So yeah. like both of those things combined, I'm sure they could have. Could have it didn't ever seem like they more, were trying to. It use, didn't seem like. Sorry, go on. I don't think that they were. And I think maybe this is what you were about to say. I don't think that there was ever. It, it didn't seem like he, Stephen King was trying to use the emotion factor right. as any of the explanation at all. No, it, and that was really. It was cool. purely like we know that once we connect with all the other Institute kids, mm-hmm. we'll have this unbelievable power, and then they did. And and yeah and. And the Avester was like he just kind of figured that out through like instinct almost like he just sort of felt out there yeah. and was like there are like we can do more like mm-hmm. power together you know yeah, a lot of our predictions were kind of wrong too <laughs> I think that we <laughs> that we got the like, overall thing uh, I think yeah but, pretty like, much like we hit everything except for the tidiness of the overall right ending. we didn't guess who died correctly I think we might have said that Avery could die. 
Yeah, I, I think don't, you did. I, I was thinking I think about like listening okay. to it again before recording so that I would remember what we said. But I was, you know, literally reading up until the last second. Um, you got off work a little bit earlier than I was anticipating. Uh, it, and, but I believe that I did say that it wouldn't surprise. Like Avery could die. Right. That 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 one like, made sense. And I, for some reason, I still expected Tim to die, I'd, or at least be a little more important than he was. But he kind of didn't really seem as important as I thought he was going to be. He was just like the. Adult. It was definitely all about the kids. Exactly. You know, like that the, was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. The kids did everything, and in that show of insane power that nobody would have ever mm-hmm. thought of before, that just like broke the survivors of the staff. They were just like. Well, fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're not gonna fight back anymore because shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I can't do that. <laughs> right. I just like the build up to the the guy with the lisp. Like for it being its own chapter, I know we talked mm-hmm. about it in um, prior to recording. Yeah, yeah, prior to our recording, but it was kind of anticlimactic. Like, like, yeah. like you said before we started, it would have been fine if you just threw the word epilogue in front of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so apart from the story that was being told mm-hmm. that it should have just been an epilogue. And if I would just let myself think about it as an epilogue, then it would be okay. But because it doesn't have the word epilogue in front of it, it yeah, it implies that it's part of the story being told. And I don't think that it adds anything to the story being told. Right. I think it still had the finality at the end of, like, right before that section. I think it still would have had the finality of a good ending as well as right. leaving it kind of the open-endedness that we're, we're sort of expecting. Mm-hmm. I do think our overall theme of uh, that we talked about last week, like, the moral um, of, like, there is really no right. No, I don't know if we said that, that there is no, no right, right and wrong, but it's like... The right and wrong isn't... Black and white. That, that's what I was trying to say. Thank you. It, it's, yeah, or that exactly. at the very least, you can. It, it's easy for an individual to let morality be ambiguous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I yeah, think that it is. It is. In general, yeah, there, I don't think there is just one right and one wrong. That's probably crazy. nothing in this world that's just black and white. Yeah. That in my be, opinion. No, I agree. I Other mean, people might disagree. I'm sure that there are people who disagree. Uh, but, uh, and I think that that's. At least that's what I took from it, was that it was sort of like morality is ambiguous and that means something different to each of these characters as well because right. they each sort of deal with it in a different way. Yeah. Seems like Nikki wants to shut it out. Kalisha was having a real sort of identity crisis about mm. did they do the right thing by ending the oh, Institute. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. She Luke was, was definitely that. like, no, we did do the right thing. Like he could see why the Institute believed in themselves, mm-hmm. but he'd spent a a lot of time about eight paragraphs for us explaining <laughs> mathematically how it's incorrect and we know how good he is at math <laughs> yeah and so like you, we could see how each and, and tim was just like how do i keep these kids from falling apart like he wasn't even thinking about the yeah like his morality was how do i keep these kids from falling apart mm-hmm. uh, which is which is like it just shows like tim's just like such a noble character like even before he was really introduced to us like kind of him giving his background it was just like yeah i you know, I used to be pretty high, like at my old precinct. And then like, Mm -hmm. like even the story that he told about like how he pulled a firearm and and discharged it like to somebody that he thought was a threat. It was just like, he was always making what he believed to be the right decision. And it's, yeah. And and, it was about protecting people. And, and, and and, in his interview, he was honest. He told Mm -hmm. the truth. Like he was like, I'm not going to fudge it around. Like, and and he, and he did tell him like, yeah, I'll be the night knocker. I plan to stay here for a while. He's just our straight shooting character that we can depend on. Yeah. And, and, Right off the bat, we were able to depend on him, and it's funny because, mm-hmm. like, which is probably I, why we didn't get a whole lot with him, is right? Because he's Cause the relatively more we know, inconsequential. <laughs> the more we know, yeah. the more we might not be able to trust him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just need him to be a straight shooter that we can rely on and to move the story or to because Luke wouldn't have been able to procure a car to get to the airport to get back to Maine, you know? Like, yeah, so we need an adult to do that, and all we need out of that adult is for him to be somebody we, we, we can rely on, yeah. like Tim. Yeah, that is kind of fun, though. That, like, it's not like Luke just had power, you know, he had mm-hmm. a little bit of power that they could only harness together, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and we and we learned that, like, the, the kids from other institutes were the because Luke can't he can barely push a plate over, you know, it, like when, when, mm-hmm. uh, I believe it was Stackhouse. No, who was shooting at, um, it wasn't Stackhouse cause he wasn't in the, the gunfight. But, uh, last week it was when, um, when Luke was at the, the cop's oh, place and they were Dupre. all shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were in Dupre and they had the little shootout and, uh, and Tim almost got shot, uh, shot dead. And then, uh, without thinking, uh, 
I, I think, you know, without thinking, Luke wanted to do something, you know, so like mm-hmm. he wanted to be able to move it. But I think that like the power from the other kids yeah. inherently led him to be like the outlet so that he could do yeah. do with mm-hmm. the power what he wanted. And he was able to, you know, make the gun point in a different direction, which yeah. would have been way beyond his ability. Like it was fun mm-hmm. that the main character isn't the prodigy child. Like the prodigy was Avery. Right. It, but the, our main character was like super, super smart. <laughs> right. So yeah. That was, that he, was kind of like neat. he was a prodigy, but he wasn't the prodigy of the subject matter, which yeah, is that's a good way to play psychic it. abilities. That's, a good, that's yeah. very, yeah. I liked it. I thought it was, that was just like, that's a fun little dynamic. Just like we're not, mm-hmm. it, cause it would have been interesting. It's more enjoyable. It, I mean, I, it would have been interesting to so go with, to follow So much of media Avery. is saturated with the overpowered character. Right. And that's fun once in a while. But I think that the story needs to know that that's what it's doing and be mm-hmm. able to handle it, maybe even in just like a tongue in cheek way. Yeah. But for it to be for, for a show or a book or a movie or anything to just have like an overpowered character mm-hmm. and think that that's awesome <laughs> and like like really think that that's awesome. That's yeah. boring and shitty. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, there is a book that you, you go in kind of knowing that he I don't want to call him OP, mm-hmm. but like. He is sort of just like, you know, he's like the Superman character of it. And, and mm-hmm. you know, it, it. I think you and I have had this exact conversation years ago. It's like Superman's kind of a boring yeah, character. I because Superman. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> because it's just like, okay, <laughs> all you need is kryptonite and you win. Like Batman beat him in a, in a fist fight because Batman knows martial arts and he wore a kryptonite ring. Right. It's like, that's it. <laughs> but then even whenever we need it, guess what? Kryptonite doesn't kill him. Right. <laughs> you know, I think at some point, Lex Luthor stabs him with a kryptonite spear and it's okay. He's fine. It's okay because we said so. <laughs> yeah, because we said so. Because <laughs> it's pretend. Superman sucks. <laughs> um, but so, you know, for for a story with like a Superman esque character that you know can do anything, I I think the name of the wind. He, he's he's kind of a very catch all character. He sort of can do it all, mm-hmm. and he learns fast. He does it all. Really, you know, he's he's a prodigy, a prodigy mm-hmm. kid, just kind of like Luke was. But I don't think it was done in a way that makes you feel like he's always going to get through it or he's always going to do the right thing. Does the world scale up with him where like the situations become difficult or be, or maybe he doesn't have the knowledge that he needs to be able to apply his overpower power in that moment or something like that. I want to say that the, the situations have all been difficult, but he ha he uses, he has to, he just uses the the abilities he has at the moment Mm -hmm. to get through it however he can. So like, I thought that Vasher was overpowered. Yeah. Um, and inherently once we've, you know, he is because we find (laughs) out he's one of the original, uh, but there were situations where he was unable to overcome the issue just with sheer power. Right. Like he was overpowered or not even overpowered, but he was extremely capable, mm-hmm. way more so than anybody else in that story. Yeah. But there were still situations that he was unable to handle just because by because it was it, obviously being a fantasy book, it's not realistic, but it was a realistic world within that universe where yeah. there isn't just a Superman character yeah. who literally is unstoppable by anything. And now that, that was kind of the fun thing about this, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. Clark Kent has like a job and money, I assume money's never an issue, but like in the name of the wind, uh, you know, he's, he's broke, you know, he doesn't even have, he doesn't have a family. He's an orphan, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 but he's, he's basically as smart as Luke, you know? Right. And so, so put luke in that situation and it's like how, how it, we kind of did almost you know mm-hmm. when he was when he was surviving on his own he cut off his ear and he was trying to you know right we, we put luke in that we knew he, we didn't even really know he was going to make it but right. we, we had a good feeling that he was going to make it you know and that that's kind of the vibe i get from that book but luke has that that appeal to him that he mm-hmm. that he can do anything but not that he's going to do everything right. i guess there's that adversity that presents itself that we aren't a hundred percent positive that he will overcome right and i like the bit of uncertainty especially because you know after having so many stories just throughout our lives and stuff and i mean we're both still young so i mean just the the handful of stories that we've that we've heard over the the years we've been alive it's like you start to feel like there is a bit of a cookie cutter approach to certain stories mm-hmm. and you're like, I don't really want it to end the same or be the same, but you don't want it to be so far off that it's like, okay, that's obvious that they just didn't want to be the cookie cutter. Right. And I don't want to say this was a cookie cutter ending because I definitely don't think it was a cookie cutter ending, but it, it was, 
it wasn't what I was expecting for it, for a king ending. As but an it was, ending, it sort of fell off. But it, yeah, it, yeah, it kind of. It fell wasn't off. as good as the rest of the book. Yeah, I thought that the, <laughs> which is funny to say that because the the I thought that the rest of the book was better than the end. Like I thought that the. But I think by a long shot, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean I was recommending the book to everybody, and then mm-hmm. as I was listening today, I was just kind of like, oh okay, well, like, I mean, yeah. we could have figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to the rest of the story, it was definitely not at the same level yeah definitely gonna recommend it to everybody still but it's mm-hmm. i agree it's it wasn't I, yeah to the same i don't level. regret reading it no i no. would you know conceivably read it again in 10 years yeah um, i could do that but the the ending was definitely uh i will say by far the weakest part of the story especially if king wrote a book in 10 years that was off of like luke when he's 23 or whatever how old is he in this 10 12 I think he's 12. Yeah, so whenever Luke's 22, 23, like if, if he... Because that's what he does. He'll like literally wait the actual years, like Animal mm-hmm. Crossing and stuff. Like he'll wait the actual amount of time and then be like, I think it's been long enough. This is what Luke would be up to, you know? Right, like yeah. Just because he's like, oh, I'm never going to die. I'll just, wa- I'll just wait it out. Yeah. <laughs> but then he'll pump the books out, unlike one of our other famous authors that's just sitting on a couple of the but like I, who am i to begrudge any author for holding on to a book because it's just it's a masterpiece they're waiting to release it oh we're, I, we're obviously hoping it's a masterpiece right yeah it's a masterpiece <laughs> of somebody it, if it comes off and it's if it comes out and it's terrible then i think we have every right to start being mad <laughs> i think we've got every right to be mad now oh yeah but i mean the, yeah, we, yeah you have the right to be upset but it'll but, be extremely egregious if it comes if if the winds of winter and a dream of spring, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> if those come out and they're awful, then there there'll be riots in the streets <laughs> by the five people who still care by that point. Because right. it's not going to happen for another thirty years, probably. Oh gosh, I hope he makes it that long. I, I really, I mean, George R. R. Martin is already a, like eighty-five or something. Is right? he really? He's he's like old. I he's knew he was older, older than I thought I, whenever I looked it up. I didn't meet him, but I did a book signing um, in College Station when he was there one time, mm. and it wasn't really a meeting. It was just kind of like waiting, like you just wait in, in line, wait in a long ass sign. line, and then you hand your book to a guy to the bailiff, and the bailiff takes it up to Judge Judy, and she's on. You know what I mean? Like, okay. he, yeah, I didn't you even hand see, it like, directly to him. I didn't even wow. hand it to him. No, I handed it to a guy mm. that handed the book to him. That is a level and he of asked detachment. Me what pa- he asked me what page I wanted it signed on. Like, do you want it on the do you want it on the cover? Or do you want it on the first page? Mm. <laughs> you know, and right. then I didn't even say hi to him. Him. like he just he was looking down he was just like he probably had a hand cramp i was right at the end of the line too and he and then he had to give a speech and uh oh sure like yeah i, I can't imagine what that situation is to yeah. just be signing books for hours and hours and hours yeah certainly for someone as big as he is that has an audience that would take hours and hours and hours yeah in any given city but still like man that's a level of detachment that i wasn't expecting yeah and i and i wonder if like because we, we build up these authors to be different than they they i mean different we build them, at least i do i build them up to be larger than life you know mm-hmm. um because they're the ones that created this whole new world that i've spent a lot of time in yeah right. it's not that i feel like i know them but i kind of feel like i have developed a, a little bit of a relationship yeah. with them yeah mm-hmm. and um and and it's and it's it's funny it's the same thing with like podcasts and with like uh, uh just like i guess any sort of famous person that, that you get a little bit behind the curtain on um mm-hmm. you kind of feel like you know them and then then you remember like oh yeah they don't know me at all they don't, right. they just know it's that totally i read like their one-sided. stuff yeah and uh and it's not like that it's not like king or martin or you know uh, rowling or anybody i'm sure they're all nice i'm sure they're great to their mm-hmm. families and i'm sure they're great to their fans and their friends it's just um at the same time, they're just people, though. Exactly, they're just people, and 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 if it's a bad day, it's a bad day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I cannot. And and th- those those three authors that I just said there, and then along with Patrick Rothfuss and oh shoot, who did who did uh who did our first book? Um, Neil Gaiman. Thank you, Neil Gaiman. Those are all some great authors, and I would love. Like, I love just hearing anything about them. Like, mm-hmm. just just little tidbits, like in the news or whatever. Um, I mean. I don't like hearing bad news, but it was interesting. I mean, you had a little bit of news about Stephen King and his, uh, and his, not a co-writer, but his, like, his, uh, his, his, uh, oh, his, his, his the, partner, the, you know, yeah, it, it was in the epilogue the of this, of this book. book, yeah, yeah and it was, uh, it was, it was sad and sweet, you know, but, uh, you know, and, 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 and like how, uh, how he wrote under the, the pen name Richard, Richard Buckman and how it's just, 
I don't know. I guess I don't have too much to say about the story. It's just I'm thinking more about the author, like I mm-hmm. and all the authors and stuff, and just reading in general. Right, <laughs> and just kind yeah. of thinking out loud. This book kind of, I guess, invigorated my desire for more stories. And because it was closed, you know, all mm-hmm. in one story or seemingly closed, right, I'm sure yeah. exactly like you did. I with don't the see Shining how and, they would come back to it. Yeah, because I mean, the institute as an organization is destroyed at this yeah, point. Yeah, and I believe the man with the lisp even said all around the world they are. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the kids in there China... There were a couple and, like, that were able world. to... He says that in countries where kids are have uh, obedience ingrained in them a little bit right. more hard than, you know, other countries, they lasted yeah. another six weeks, but then they cr- collapsed as and well. And they killed <laughs> themselves. They yeah, weren't even going to escape. They're just like, we're done. Yeah, we helped those suicide. other kids and this is Which over. Which leads you to believe that they were probably Asian countries because that's sort of like... <laughs> I didn't even imagine any are, other country besides yeah, Asian countries. Yeah, because those are like the stereotypes, you know, <laughs> like uh, extremely obedient yeah. as a generality. Of, of course. And... Um, High suicide rates in youngsters. Didn't even think about that, but that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> now that you say it, that no, that makes perfect sense. I mean, they had to put nets up at the Apple, the Apple factory because people were jumping out of yeah. windows. So like, right. I mean, not to say that that's how the country is, but I mean, th- that that is kind of the reference he was it's making. A, he certainly was saying, an example. Yeah, was, of, yeah. Th- yeah, there you go. It's a perfect Definitely example. Definitely stereotypes, but stereotypes that have recent mm-hmm. referenceable data. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, and it made it sound like they were all over the world. So yeah, to think they definitely were. I think that at some point you threw out a number. I think there were like twenty. I, th- I was thinking like twenty two, twenty as uh, well, not twenty two. He uses the phrase "shadow government," which made me very happy because that was the phrase I kept using. Nice, yeah, <laughs> shadow government. The there is a point where they do. Uh, give a name to Trump, where they had skirted around saying Trump's name <laughs> yeah. last week. Uh, and I the thought it was because Annie. it was because I think that it is weird to say something about a sitting president. It is uh, kind of weird. In a piece of work, unless the purpose of that work is to call things out, mm-hmm. which this book is not about oh, the no, presidency. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, but then they just outright say it. And so I was like, well, that's weird for you to skirt around it and then outright say it. Right. But okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else did they do? Um, I, I was waiting to, uh, for, did you read Helter Skelter by any chance? No. Do you remember reading that? That's it been in every book of his that I've read so far. I swear it's been in there. And I just didn't, I guess I missed it this time. Or yeah, it's I've not heard that there. it's a very common thing that he goes back to. It's the to. only time I've ever heard the word. And it, they're only in his books that I hear him. And I want to read the book Helter Skelter now. Mm-hmm. That's uh, apparently the Mansons used yeah, to use yeah. it. And I didn't know that. Well, that was, it was <laughs> one of the phrases written in blood on the wall in the Tate household. Mm, cool. Yeah, then I should read that. Yeah. That sounds like a super creepy book. Mm. It, yeah, it probably is to... Spend. I mean, I, I I have not read it, or I haven't read any other books about Charles Manson. Uh, but I've seen a lot of shows back when uh, TV was more informative than it is now, <laughs> and um, when we and believed it to be more informative, to, at least. Well, <laughs> at the very least, it was presented with the intent of being informative, like the his, like <laughs> we've talked go. about before, like the History Channel and A and E and stuff like that. Where now everything is sensational and is about entertainment first. Oh yeah, dude! I know. cannot tell you how dumb I looked when the Animal Planet came out with that dragons movie that dragons show because i didn't catch the subtext at the very end that said if it literally like yeah, that was the right. only they they put in like an if it was like the presentation if, was it was like so dragons real. were real yeah. and then right at the end it was like if dragons were real this is the presentation right. like yeah. this is what we would think that and then it would bob be. newhart wakes up from a dream Right, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, and I even had my dad. I was like, hey, dad, come watch this. Dragons are real. They found one. Like, I don't know how this isn't breaking news. <laughs> and then we watched it, and he's like, I don't know how it isn't either. And then at the very end, he's like, oh, no, see right there at the end. That's why. I was like, God dang it. <laughs> you know? And then the mermaid thing. But it's just, yeah, and I right. see exactly what you're saying. They're sensationalizing these things because of the i don't know i don't even know why just because it's interesting well, the, I mean, well the, the point is to gain viewership because it's all about making money yeah and the attention span of the american populace has shortened so much that you have to make everything sensational to gain the viewership that is kind of an interesting thing with with king too is like you know as wealthy as he is i can't imagine he's just writing the books to pay the checks you know at I'm this sure, point i, I would, like I would certainly hope at least but yeah it's got to be just like yeah i've got this idea and i love writing so i'm going to make it a thing yeah if it sells would, it sells if it doesn't so. whatever because i mean i don't think rowling's writing too much now yeah she had that a just, vacant or a, a, a whatever vacancy uh, or whatever yeah 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 something that she vacancy. wrote right after she was done with harry potter i think open vacancy something like that yeah i mean that's redundant though right <laughs> <laughs> open open something yeah uh, something about a vacancy that was like a sort of like you know 
like a like a sort of like a a, a dime novel it was like a murder mystery thing yeah and, and, and she, then did she, she did she afterwards? wrote under a pen name and she wrote uh, oh, yeah. the, the cuckoo's calling uh, which I was a uh, about that which was and she wrote that under a pen name and i remember reading it and thinking like this is just kind of okay and then my mom told me later like oh what'd you think of that book uh, it's actually jk rowling i was like oh and then when I looked it up, it was like, the book did okay. And then went straight to the number one New York Times bestseller when it was released yeah, that J.K. Rowling was right. actually the author. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's kind of, I mean, An unexpected she obviously vacancy, loves, I think, is what it was. That's probably what it was, yeah. But I heard the same thing about that, that it was just like, okay. Yeah. And, and it was just like, well, we appreciate that she's trying something different. Yeah, and definitely And this not, isn't bad, Yeah, but. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's the, what I'm trying to say is like, I like to think that, he's doing something like that. Like, I'm sure she wrote that. Someone who's written as many books as he has, how can you assume anything different? You well, know? and, and like, I assume J.K. Rowling did the same thing. I, yeah. I assume she just liked writing and she was she's done with Harry Potter. She's probably the most so wealthiest, to... uh, or the most wealthiest, that's bad English. She's, she's the most she's, super awesome She wealthiest. has to be the the wealthiest author that ever lived at this point. Yeah, I think she's like the most wealthy female alive. Maybe so. That wouldn't surprise me either. I, I, I think she's like a billionaire, if not trillionaire. Oh, I, think billion, I don't think that though, we I have. Think there's not a trillionaire that exists yet, but she's definitely yeah, I don't think, a billionaire. I think you're right. Not a trillionaire yet. <laughs> <laughs> or she she might be a billionaire. She's I, she's uh, she's definitely obviously a millionaire. A millionaire. <laughs> she might be a hundred hundred millionaire. Yeah, you know, like in the hundreds of millions. Maybe billionaire. I don't know. I thought um, for some reason. But yeah, but we, whatever. There's, there's nowhere near trillionaire at this yeah. point. That would be a, a literally unfathomable a hundred money. Even uh, a Rockefeller billions. adjusted for inflation had not reached trillionaire status. So, and Rockefeller, you know, the, he owns the money. In comparison to everything, <laughs> is the richest thing that ever happened. He, yeah. he owns all, the, or they own all the money right. and all the stuff and the people and the conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, so so I mean, but that being said. I assume that she wrote that book for the pleasure of writing to, to, to stre- stretch these muscles, her writing muscles. To Certainly her whole life her up creativity. to that point and her whole career up to that point was just this one universe. Yeah. So, it's like, so what if I do something different? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's fun to see that like, you know, authors are writing for the pleasure of writing. Cause uh, you know, this book, it's not like it was ending a series. It wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't, you know, starting a series. It was right. just, you know, it was just a piece that he wanted to put out there. It was right. an idea. He and had generally his, that's an whenever stories are best or not even stories, but just products are best is yeah. whenever it's being done, you know, for the sake of it. And because it was, you, you wanted it to be done, not because you needed to churn out another thing right. for electricity next month. You know? yeah. yeah. And that, that was, I don't want to say refreshing because I've never been able to tell, you know, that an author's doing that. Yeah. But it's, it's nice to know that somebody that's as well, received and well written and well known as king Mm -hmm. is still putting in like the the writing for the love of writing just like uh joan hugh like her debut book like you could tell that she loved those characters and the story and she Mm -hmm. had a good time writing it like you know and And from the afterward that was in that i think that you know you know i won't put a number to it exactly because how do i remember at this point but she said (laughs) that that was a story that had been developed i think so like eight somewhere between eight and ten years. Yeah, I think she's been working on it a long time. That was like, and it being her debut, mm-hmm. you can imagine why. You know, you yeah. have an idea that you've maybe had since high school. Yeah, and you've played with it through college, and then finally you're like, okay, I can make a book out of this. And so, yeah, and it who, makes sense for a debut. Yeah, and I know King has a bunch of little manuscripts lying around his house of like ideas of cool. novels that I he mean, started he puts writing. Out like two books a year, so I'm yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I don't. He know. evidently just writes so much that he's just like, okay, well, I can finish this one <laughs> yeah I, yeah i mean I, I don't know for a fact but i know that in, in bet, his book you know. in in one of his books where he writes himself into the story there's a point where he's like ruffling through and he finds the book that you're reading mm-hmm. you know right. <laughs> but it's a it is it was, it was fun and it's just yeah i mean you, you know what i'm trying to say it's just yeah. it's nice that that like he still has this love for writing and, mm-hmm. and and story creating and storytelling and and it's 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 very very cool that mm-hmm. like all these authors that we've been been experiencing it doesn't. It doesn't seem like anybody's churning it out for the paycheck. You know, yeah. they're churning it out because they want to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, especially bringing Joan back up. Like she tweeted back at us. <laughs> she was like, "Thanks for reading my book." Like right, she was yeah. just like she was there. Like she's just. Mm-hmm. It's it's nice. And I bet I bet if this was Keith, Stephen King's first book ever, and we tweeted at him, he'd probably tweet back. You know, it's it, it's just mm-hmm. like. I mean, it kind of feels like anybody could have written it. And, and I guess that's the beauty of it because it's so well done that like you can, 
I mean, it's just done by an author that loves to do it. I, I guess I've said the same thing four times, but yeah, I just you know what I mean. Yeah, it's it's, it's cool. It's very cool, mm-hmm. and it makes me want to. It, it strengthens my fanship of Stephen King, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. of and of authors in general, like especially right. yeah. Like you said at the beginning of, of, of you know this statement that I think you're trying to make it. Uh, you opened up with saying that this story sort of reinvigorated your desire mm-hmm. for more reading, you know, which is something that to varying degrees we've said with almost every book that we've read. Yeah. But at least with the uh, level of detail that you're going into with that statement, I can see uh, that it's a little bit more so than previously for mm-hmm. you this time. And maybe because yeah. it's a sting, a, a sting, a, sting a Stephen book. King <laughs> book. Um, I would not read a sting book, uh, neither by <laughs> the wrestler or the musician. But the uh, it being a Stephen King book, and you know Stephen King being as much a part of your reading experience as it mm-hmm. has been throughout your life, maybe that's why. Yeah, um, maybe, and I guess that's also why it's so satisfying because I have mm-hmm. read Rowling. You know, I read Harry Potter. I was obsessed with Harry Potter, and then I read The Cuckoo's Calling, and I mm-hmm. wasn't as enthralled. You know, mm-hmm. but it was good. I did, and it, but it was a series, and I didn't even continue the series. I just wasn't that into it. And yeah. it, and it's not because I don't like mysteries. I do like mysteries, and some of the characters I kind of did like. But sometimes the story just doesn't grab you, though. Yeah, even yeah. if it's good. Yeah, exactly. You know? and, sometimes um, you just don't care. There's a lot of shows and things out there that people recommend to me. And I just, I just don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and I know it, it doesn't grab, grab me sometimes, you know? And I, yeah. And it obviously grabs a lot of other people like, you know, that book did and I'm sure mm-hmm. those shows do. And it's just, yeah. I mean, it's still nice to see that like they're writing and doing things for the, the joy of it. Like, mm-hmm. um, Oh shoot. Neil Gaiman. He, he, he was, uh, he, co-wrote the uh the omen like screenplay or something like he was there well, he, he was producing yeah he, was he doing and terry patchett like, they wrote the co-wrote book. uh good omens the book yeah. and then he did the screenplay for the show yeah so like you know he had to have been happy doing that like i mean right, of yeah. course terry or sorry not terry um neil game is a bit of an exception i feel like because he's sort of obsessed with his own works <laughs> like we can tell from <laughs> yeah. neverwhere how he's, he's just a little like, self-indulgent here yeah. and there but i, I mean which is fine. to be fair i it's probably why <laughs> i really liked it <laughs> like yeah. it's because he was so proud of it and he wanted to tell it the way he thought was the right way mm-hmm. and you know again that's i'm sure what all these authors are doing telling their stories in the way they think it needs to be told and, right, and, it's, yeah. and it's fun when you get just these genuine authors that we've been getting and i feel like we've been really on a roll you know mm-hmm. picking some good good genuine authors that we've really been are fortunate that we've only picked two things that we had issues with we had you know we had an issue with beacon 23 yeah just as a whole and it might um, be better if we did it in in bigger chunks because we split it in yeah like a couple, and i think we, we mentioned know? that before as well it like might if not we had be just better done it, yeah maybe not because <laughs> my main problem with it was the sentiment that it provided or mm-hmm. that it, that i perceived it to have been putting out there and i think that it was trash but it, it, we also had a problem or at least i had a problem with the ending of bring me back yeah um i just felt like it wasn't as strong as the rest of the book yeah we had a lot of fun like twists that we it was were way more fun talking about that book than it was reading yeah, it for sure that was a fun talk a lot of reading the book was very enjoyable, but talking about it with you and Caitlin was way more enjoyable oh, for yeah. me than the reading of it was. Yeah, um, and I don't think that's what she was going for when writing it, unfortunately. Well, <laughs> but, you know, we did enjoy it. And right. Yeah, so, yeah, and we have been lucky. We picked some good ones. Everything else has turned out pretty well. Oh, I, I had an issue with the end of the Raven Tower. I forgot about that. Everything <laughs> right up until the end. And I didn't. I don't even know that I had an issue with it. I just didn't understand how I felt about it. Right. I because I didn't there. care about anybody. That was the weird part about that book is like, it was, it, 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 it was hard to care about yeah. people. Like you were this eternal. It's almost like it didn't want you God. to care about anything. Yeah. But you're, <laughs> but, but why did this God care about this one thing this one person? That's yeah. not even like really, I the mean, motives it was the were character. unclear it was, for yeah. most of the characters. It was odd. <laughs> and there was no reason for us to care about any of the characters. We were never presented with mm-hmm. any reason to care about any of the characters. And so it was just weird. And I yeah. didn't know, I didn't know how I felt about it. I don't think I felt negative or positive or anything about it. I don't know. I, I must have felt something. I'm still talking about it, but right. <laughs> I, I, but like, I didn't. I don't. I still don't know how to fully put into words what it is that I think about that story. Other than yeah. it's weird that I don't care about any of the characters. Yeah, I got you. And then how immediately we sort of fell in love with the characters in this book. That was that was kind of a big change going from 
Was Raven Tower the last book we read before this one? No, we we uh, read another one in between that I'm blanking on right now. Well, whatever. even still, it but was so so close. Stephen to this King one. is just potentially the best character writer, though. Oh yeah, and, and he's so good at character writing that with his second book, Salem's Lot, I believed in the character of a town, not right? even a person. No, that's, and, and <laughs> you know that's just how good of a character writer he is, and no, that's, that's why we immediately point. fell in love with the characters of this book. That's a great point. And and we were able to kind of see how he's grown as an author. He made everybody likable, or not even necessarily likable, but he made at the very least get, understandable. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, relatable to varying degrees. Definitely, that's the right way to say it. Understandable and relatable. Like I'll tell you even, something that we didn't call at all. Okay. We did not see the betrayal kid in this section of reading. The girl Frida Brown. <laughs> Did not see her at all. <laughs> not even like a sideways glance at her. <laughs> she, she just got crushed. Yep, just <laughs> like 100% showing that she's just a vehicle for Avery to get to the back. She, you know? she <laughs> was, yeah. That's funny. Which is funny. It's, it, it, her, her doing the betrayal to instigate Avery getting punished to get him to the back is more elegant. They're not even elegant, but more believable than... Mrs. Sigsby just saying, nope, I know you're lying, Avery, and now I'm going to punish you so that you right. can get to the back. Like th- is- That would just be like, 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 like I said last week, I already thought that it was kind of transparent, but that would have just been like grossly transparent. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. it's, it was necessary and more believable. But then to not address her existence in the That's next section of reading yeah, that he was a little bizarre. That is kind of odd that he never brought Frida back up, especially because we talked about her Even just every for episode. To, yeah. Like we thought, Even like, just for like what are they her do? to like for us to be in her eyes for one book as we see Stackhouse run by or something, mm-hmm. but she's just gone. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> doesn't exist. And now we know that she's dead because she's in the pile of rubble of, you know, front half. Yeah. But, but at the same time, we don't know that because we don't see her. <laughs> yeah, maybe she's it's, super powerful and held all the. I'm just kidding. No, but I mean, uh, we, maybe we, she just yeah. escaped. You know, no, I mean, we, we know we that all the kids in yeah. front have died. Yeah, they are, they're <laughs> we, right. We said so. Like the, the the kids that escaped. No, no, they all had seizures and died just like um, the the big kid that had the seizure in the cafeteria. Oh, uh, um, I keep wanting to call him Harry. I don't think that's right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, a very kind of generic uh, big boy name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Uh, um, What's her name? Kalisha knows that they all had seizures and died Mm -hmm. because of the immense power that they were putting out. And they weren't used to that psychic ability yet because they had not gone through all the same processes that they had gone through to get to back half. Mm -hmm. And so the psychic power just being thrown out there killed them. And then they dropped a building on top of them. (laughs) Yeah. And I thought there was going to be a lot more like running through the institute like a lot more like kind of action and it was just sort of like the kids were fixing it and luckily tim and tim was there to- <laughs> right i was sort of confused about how they were going to handle the institute thing because yeah. they were trapped in a tunnel right uh it, so them that that's it yeah. they're trapped what are we, what are we gonna have them freedom? reaching out to the other kids you know the reveal that there's other kids and then them reaching out to the other kids and Getting the exponential power, yeah, and being able to do things. God damn it! <clears throat> but the burp makes sense and it mm-hmm. works. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, even then, I was like, "Well, how do they get out of the tunnel?" <laughs> and they, you know, they blow the door off and then they start raising the building. And I didn't expect that, but Mm-mm. it was still sort of like I didn't know what was going to happen there. Mm-hmm. I thought that they were going to have to go in there and extract them or something like that. I definitely, yeah, I saw an extraction. It ended up being saw... more dramatic than I was expecting. Uh, which was fine. It yeah. ended up working and was, you know, believable in the context of the story. But I just like going into it. I was just like, I don't, I don't know how any of this works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, yeah, that that. At least the the literal institute thing. I don't know how that works. Uh, it that, did. Yeah. No, that's a great point because as we were guessing the whole time, it was like we we wanted to kind of predict something, and then it's like, no, we're gonna go off on this whole other wall. It's a uh, this whole other you know direction for mm-hmm. how how we're gonna rescue these kids and. It's it's funny how like you start a story and you start thinking of of, of the way it could end and then mm. it's just like obviously they're not you so the, whoever right, wrote it is, yeah. is thinking something different and it's it's I it's interesting to see like the way the mind works like did he think about an ending like the ones that we thought about did he mm-hmm. uh, consciously avoid that did he go into it knowing this ending already like right. 
I mean, how do you even write a book? Yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. Like, how do you, I mean, the way I understand him writing books is that he that he starts with a premise and then he lets the characters sort of take him through it, mm-hmm. and um, which I think is really cool, just because you know you you leave each character open to to growth and change and um, you know uh, a lot of depth and right. uh, and and depth that you didn't even anticipate, even though you're the the you're the god of this character for right. for lack of a better term. I mean, mm-hmm. you're the creator of yeah, exactly. this universe and and but to but to kind of speak of it like it's its own thing mm-hmm. and like it's coming alive in front of your own eyes and like you didn't expect it but like combined with your pen and your imagination and like this world that you were allowed to create is like, this is, this is what they did. And this is, I mean, mm. I'm not, I, I didn't make, the, it, obviously it's funny Luke he almost, would do this because Luke would do it's this. Luke, and it's yeah, not, it's, not, I think that Luke would do Stephen this. King it's not Stephen King doing just, it. Like Luke would do this. That's this the, character that I've created. That's one thing that I've always been able to hop on with his stuff. It's just like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like, Oh, this is what that character would do. And it's never felt like, Oh yeah, of course King wrote him to do that. It's just like, he just lets the characters be and he lets right. them go. And that's, that's a very interesting method. I want, I'm sure other authors do that, but it's uh, like going back to Game of Thrones. It feels authentic with him. It feels very authentic. That's a great, good point rather than me just talking about it. Another <laughs> book. Very authentic. It feels mm-hmm. authentic and it, and yeah, it doesn't feel like it's just another King in here and like it's, right. it's a cookie cutter hero, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's very authentic and the characters do as they do. And right. Yeah, there's there's no guidance. <laughs> it's yeah. just letting them be, which is silly to say because they're fake. <laughs> but so how right. can you leave them be and let them do what they were gonna do? Right. But he does, and it makes sense to us. It's a certain mind something. space where, like, you know, you've created this character and you have all the, you know, backstory of them in your mind, mm-hmm. and you know, because it at some point it starts with you as the author creating this character and giving them their motivation and making the first few decisions for them. Right. Right. Like why did Tim get off the plane in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Because I say he did, you know, like if that was, you know, somewhere towards the beginning of where he started with that character of the story. Yeah. Uh, But just as an example. Yeah. Uh, But then at a certain point you've given the character enough pieces where you can then create an elaborate idea of what that character is and I assume that he he's in the, the mind space where he believes that that character is now an existing thing, even if only during the writing of that story. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, you, you wouldn't be sane if you continued believing that all of your characters <laughs> existed, certainly when you've written a million books like he has. Um, but I, I would think that the way that he lets that work, where you like, you know, you were saying he said that he lets the characters do their own mm-hmm. thing once yeah. they've developed, that it's how could I, I think that that's him being able to be in the mind space of believing that those characters exist and and so you know through his writing showing what it is that they did in the yeah. story that he's got in his head it's definitely got to be easier to let go too because i can't I, I feel like if i wrote a story and i put all this work into creating a universe with like the just just this story you might not example, want like a character to die i would definitely or, not want them to mm-hmm, die i would yeah. want to write another book i would i would be trying to turn it into a series mm-hmm. you know I, I would hold so much attachment to all these things and he's so good at like but if you can believe that bobby killed sue then it's okay that sue's gone right and and it's he just yeah he just lets it unfold and he's and and he doesn't he doesn't force anything longer mm-hmm. than it needs to be it's just like this is what happened and if another story comes like i'm gonna refer doctor doctor sleep doctor no sleep something like that mm-hmm. it's it's the sequel of the shining that nobody right. knew mm-hmm. was coming <laughs> like, yeah you know, like if, if a story comes it's coming but it's he just he it's very it's just it's it's so unique in its own way that it he just lets them happen i i, I want to find I want to find another king. <laughs> I mean, I love Stephen King though. So I mean, in any any one of his well, the good books, news I'll is read. he keeps keeps putting books out. Yeah, so that's you, great. You can get more. Oh yeah, that's and great. even if not even talking about the new ones, there's probably thirty that you haven't read that already exist. I'm, you know? I'm sure there are. We, I mean, there were eighty <laughs> to eighty something. Yeah, what total. was it? It said like at least seventy two or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's interesting phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> we have all the records of the world and we think it's this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't know for sure but it's probably this many books but right. uh, yeah all in all great book would recommend mm-hmm. and uh expect the ending to be weird if yeah. you do read it. it it was weird the whole 
I don't know if I can't remember what we mentioned before and during recording at this point, but the man with the list was completely unnecessary. Oh, yeah. To show up right at the yeah. end there. Yeah, it was just... At least in the way that it played out. If It, it could have played out very different where he was actually threatening mm-hmm. and we end the story with a cloud over our heads about yeah. the you know the shadow government. But the way that it played out was just kind of like, I don't care. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> this I was get, needless. It kind of gave an ominous feeling like we fucked up and the world was going to end, but I trust Luke so much that I'm like, nah, we're right. good. <laughs> yeah. We didn't mess there's, up. That, there was, the Lisp guy did his We went wrong. to pains to talk about why he was wrong. Yeah, the, the guy with and the Lisp just, just like, did, his well, ma- did his math wrong. It just It was too much. <laughs> Everything about that section was too much. Yeah, could have been a little shorter, yeah. that epilogue, but... Yeah, I mean that, that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't ruin the. Like book. we also said, the rest of the book was, you know, it's it's a uh, as as far as the bar of this book, it was subpar, but the rest of it was above the bar. Oh you know? yeah, so yeah. it's it's fine, whatever. You know, everything has got a weak point. This weak point just happened to stand out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, do you wanna do you want to go into our next book or do you have anything you think you want to say about this guy before we wrap up? I don't think I have anything else to say. I don't think so either. I think we did a pretty good homage to the book and King and a lot mm-hmm. of talking about King. Um, right. Yeah. But you know, he deserves it. Uh, <laughs> right. He needs more press. Um, yeah. So uh, we picked a new book. It's a, I don't know how Will found it, but he found it. And when we were the reading, same way I find everything very lazily on Goodreads by just seeing what's new. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but when you sent it to me, I, I really enjoyed the, the premise behind it. It, it. it stood out, you know, a strong female lead and it would have been that way no matter what. And it just feels like it's, it's, it's interesting because when we were reading the description, it felt like a, a fusion of a never ending story and, um, what was the other thing I said it sounded like? Never ending story and No, um Narnia. Narnia, thank you. Mm. And so that just that all in all, like if that if that's all you take from it, that's what we're reading. Yeah. <laughs> and I I can't wait. I think it'll be a very, very cool, cool read. It does sound very fun. Of the, and the format is I cool. put forth like two or three uh, books mm-hmm. and you know, we looked at a couple of them and then this one, at the very least, uh, I think uh, sounds like the most fun of the ones we oh, put yeah, out Oh yeah, and there. the format of the book is really mm-hmm. interesting. I think that'll be a very fun read. Yeah, there appears to be a couple of uh, um, like a parallel story being told. Yeah, story um, within the story, which you'll experience whenever you know. Even just now, whenever I'm going to tell you how much we're going to read it. So the book is called "The Ten Thousand Doors of January." It's by Alex E. Harrow. It's a, a book about a girl that lives in a mansion, and she's. You find she finds a book and I don't know adventures. Her ensue. name is January. It's a it's a fantasy book. Uh, the what we're going to be reading is the first seven chapters, which uh, are not going to be broken up in the way that you think. Um, <laughs> like I said, there's some sort of parallel story being told here, and maybe it's not a parallel story. Maybe it's this uh, uh, just something adjacent to the story be happening that uh, has its own chapter breakdown. Right, uh, but it is literally the first seven chapters that we're reading, which, uh, from a practical standpoint, uh, it means that you're going to read through chapter four, the unlocked door. Um, the chapter after that is called chapter three, <laughs> uh, only written out instead of having the numeral. So that's how they appear to differentiate between the two stories. Uh, the main story uses the numerals, and the parallel or adjacent story uses uh, the, the the numbers written out so stop after chapter four the unlocked door uh, yeah. don't read chapter three much on doors comma w dot 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 i don't want to open up the chapter to see what the rest of that title is yeah it might give you a spoiler anyway but <laughs> we're going to try and break this into three episodes i think we're going to be able to get seven seven six is how the breakdown is going to go yeah um, and it'll it'll probably help too just rather than making it any shorter since it's two it since it, it looks like it's two stories wrapped into one it'll probably help mm-hmm. at least it'll help me right <laughs> get the get everything you know it'll in be order a relatively a easy read it's a hundred it's 370 something pages in total so if we yeah. break down into three we're doing like 120 pages or so each week yeah. um which will be you know nice and easy yeah. and if it's as fun as i'm anticipating it being this will just be like a pleasant read yeah just three pleasant episodes which is also good because anime is happening right now, and a lot of good stuff I need coming to be, out. Uh, paying attention to that more uh, consistently than in the past, where I just let things pile up for four weeks and have to catch up all at once. <laughs> and you guys know we'll keep you updated on anime, right? We always. What's always happening do. right now that we're so excited, to Jordan? My Hero Academia, um, uh, Shokugeki no Soma. Food Wars, yeah, yeah, Food Wars, mm-hmm. and um, there's the third one, and I can't remember right now. 
right? Wasn't there a third one that you were just There's several about? things. There's a so uh, Sword Art Online is also there, starting the second part of it. its third season. Yeah, uh, Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma, uh, and My Hero Academia, My Boku Hero. no Hero Academia are starting their fourth seasons at the same time. And the second half of season three of Sword Art is happening. And uh, there's a couple of other things that I'm excited about that are less considerably less important than those three, but they're happening at the same time. Which is in- that's crazy. Those Fall 19 are- is the best anime season ever. Oh yeah, I think I can't wait. We'll find out. I yeah. re- I started all the premieres last not last night. Um, when did I watch everything? Saturday night was whenever I I started all the premieres and I was drinking and I made some tweets about my impressions of the first. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to read them for y'all because I think they might be enjoyable. And them just being opening episodes, is not really too much to talk about with them. Right. They're just place setting. Yeah. So I can summarize it with these tweets. It's catching the people up that didn't go, uh, uh, well, that don't remember or didn't go full nerd like right, me and yeah. rewatch the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And we're not going to talk uh, at length about these different shows during these episodes. Uh, we're just both really excited about the two, so we're just going to kind of do updates. Yeah, so and then at the end of the seasons, we're going to do standalone episodes for each Food Wars and My Hero Academia. Yeah, so y'all will um, have time to catch we'll, up. We'll, we'll talk about the entire season, uh, but at least you know as it happens, we'll just be talking about how excited we are. Um, anyways, here's my tweets and how I think about the uh, opening episodes, and I'm going to assume it's relatively in line with what Jordan thinks, because like <laughs> I said, it's just literally place-setting episodes. Okay, so where did I start? Here. Y'all, Fall 2019 might be the best anime season ever, and I might actually just let myself die afterwards. It can't get better than this. <laughs> Boku no Hero Academia, Shokugeki no Soma, and Sword Art. How can life be so good all at once? <laughs> Next tweet. I'm scared to start watching any of the Fall 19 anime because once I do, I'll be starting the train that rolls toward the end of the season. I want to experience it forever. Oh my god, (laughs) that's so true. (laughs) Next tweet. Okay, I'm starting with Sword Art and I'm eating the first plum from that wine that I killed. Oh, so uh, what I was drinking was I was drinking this Japanese plum wine and I drank the whole bottle and at the end there was like six plums left over and so I started eating those and those were intense. Oh, I bet, Um, dude. They're just sitting there soaking. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Uh, so... Those are good so far. Those are funny. I, I don't know any of these, by the way. Uh, I move on. All right, these plums are no joke. I'm just about trashed. First episode of the second half of Sword Art 3 was a good place setting. Wish the opening was a bit more fire. On to Boku no Hero Academia and more plums. Same thing with My Hero. I kind of thought the intro would get me a little more pumped. And yeah. It didn't. All the other intros, literally, like I run to those songs. Mm-hmm. Like as lame as that sounds, I don't listen to a whole lot of music, but I run to the My Hero Academia yeah. <laughs> intro it's songs. Stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. All right, so Boku no Hero Academia starts where you'd expect the new season of a premiere shown in anime to start set up but more gracefully done so yeah. the ending is more fire than the opening also vader woke up to come watch it legit <laughs> all true that's all very true <laughs> next the ending week was fire. two more plums a cigarette and some sake down time for shokugeki no soma my personal most anticipated of this season you sound like an anime character <laughs> <laughs> some sake and a cigarette and time for... <laughs> <laughs> all right first impressions all the same absurdist intensity that the series consistently shells out to great effect Weird that they skipped their typical detailed and superb animation when Rindo butchers the alligator, but hey, this, <laughs> it's the setup episode of a 24-episode season. <laughs> a related tweet immediately after, both the opening and ending are triple, emoji fire, emoji fire, emoji fire. <laughs> Next tweet, going to eat a couple plums and think about the three season premieres. Next tweet, I don't know how <laughs> Finishing these... Finishing <laughs> off the plums from the... <laughs> From the I wanted to sit there and think about everything before made, I came up with the next But you make tweet. it sound like, I'm going to go be healthy and eat some plums. It's like, little did you know, if you were paying attention, they were the sake plums. Right, they're fermented. <laughs> um, I don't know who these tweets are for. Maybe just notes from my dumb podcast. Uh, next tweet. <laughs> Bonus coverage for Inna no Shobotai, uh, Fire Force. Okay. Oh, I need to watch that. It's on my queue. Character motivations are still relatively paper thin and easily swayed. Animation is still incredible. <laughs> Opening okay. and ending are still the same absolute fire emoji. Okay. Despite entering the second car of the season, I expect that'll change soon. All right, I can watch it now. That's a good review. <laughs> That's a really good review. Overall reactions to fire emoji fall 19. Megumi Tadoroko is still a best girl. Hiraraka <laughs> Ochako is a super close second. Yeah. Mildly annoyed while pretty intrigued that we're seeing Kirito go through helpless arc after seasons of unparalleled skill. Glad to see that Boku no Hero Academia remembers the movie. Rindo should be full on Yandere. How, how, do, how, do, you, how do you mean they remembered the movie? Um, they just literally had scenes from the movie. 
in the in the first episode. Oh, okay. I just I so, guess they went over. Just my recognizing head. that it's canon and the possibly things from it could come back. That's good. I must not have noticed just because I. I took it to be canon, even though I shouldn't have, because movies typically right. aren't. It's literally canon. It's just usually shit that doesn't matter at all. Right. Look it's, at it's, almost any Naruto movie. Oh yeah, any. All Nar- completely inconsequential. Yeah, but there is a lot of there are a few things that we talked about before that they could bring back from the movie that would mm-hmm. be that would be great. You know, right? But yeah, it sets a precedent with the gauntlet yeah. that you know, and, and you know, and stuff that we could have decided mm-hmm. on our own, knowing that technology has such a strong place in this universe. Yeah. So, you know, it, it would make sense that some support hero would be able to create something for him that helps mm-hmm. him, you know, use his power a little bit more consistently yeah. and without danger. Um, but this sets a hard precedent for how that can be done. Yeah. Or the movie does. I like um, those tweets, though. So. Those are funny. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I didn't see them, like, as it's <laughs> happening. Because then I'd be like, oh, wait, I do need to watch it. And then I'd, like, flip over to the, <laughs> you know, it would definitely, I would have I would have been watching a lot mm-hmm. more anime had I been reading your tweets live. I, I just watched <laughs> My Hero, though. This, like, you texted me, like, don't forget, My Hero starts today. And I was like, really? And I went to Country Island, and it was, like, the number one thing on my, on my, uh, yeah. <laughs> on my ready to watch. It's definitely list. the biggest like, thing yes. that's happening right now. Uh, yeah, dude, it's going to be good. Yeah, but I'm excited for the rest. All right. Well, you guys know how to find us at ears underscore stamps, dog ears uh, at gmail.com. Right. No. Dog ears, ears underscore time. stamps is uh, the handle for the Instagram and Twitter. Right? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then dog ears and timestamps at gmail.com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, you That's know, check it. out the anime we're talking about. Check out those two podcasts I recommended the uh, literary one and uh, the beer guys. Those yeah. are really good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would definitely give them, a, give them a check out and um, tell your friends uh, about our show. I mean, we like doing it, so we want people to hear it. So tell everybody mm-hmm. about it, and uh, yeah, just you know, keep reading. We we like it. Yeah. Oh, what is this happening? Nothing good. Sports is happening. Yeah, sports is happening. I'm glad I don't have to watch any sports tonight. Oh no, there is football tonight. Monday night. But it's a game I don't really care too much about. Anyways, I'm Mohajik. I'm Jordan Chaver. This is Doggers and Timestamps. Go Stros.